Please tell us what the Rochdale fans were singing to you when you came on. Stick to podcasts. That must be frustrating because you're not even that good at podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the team bus, yeah. manager sat at the front, he gets, because he gets hot, he's sat in his undies. He'll, he'll be like, and flick and like, we don't, wait, wait, you, you've got to stay wait. He'd go, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I've never seen a man practice as much as him and never get any better. <laughs> well, we've not introduced you yet, keep quiet. Sorry, we're trying to do like little tippy tappy football and I'm getting out of my feet and just whipping into the channel. He's going, no, no, no stop. <laughs> I can't believe you just brought that <laughs> up. Can we, can we cut that? <laughs> Jordinio. Morning, mate. How are we? I'm all right, thank you. Yours. Back for a second week. Oh, yeah, I don't know how it's happened. I think we've, uh, we owe that one to any, don't we? <laughs> I think we do. <laughs> yeah. She had a right, a right row with old Paddy Kenny, didn't you? Yeah, it weren't even our podcast, but ours had just come out and it's uh, flown up the charts. So, cheers, very good. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Paddy Kenny was good, weren't he? He was yeah, funny. Good lad. From, from Proper good. Halifax, isn't he? Oh. Just not arse one bit. Some great stories in there, obviously, with his time with Warnock and stuff like that. But yeah, it was good. But I want to start to talk about our winning day on Sunday. Yeah, we was good, weren't we? Very good. I'm, it's my first ever golf trophy. I, I don't think I could, any be, I couldn't have been more proud on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely buzzing. There was a few lads in our team that weren't happy with the format, were there? Um, Jarrett. Jarrett. <laughs> Jason Jarrett raging. was awful. And in front of us, we had Morecambe's. <laughs> who were they? Morecambe's. I don't know who. I think, I don't know. He was in the office I at Morecambe, but... Morecambe's kit men. They were... <laughs> They were, they were, none of them were, well, they, in fact, they were one athlete, weren't they? One yeah, of them was, was one quite, player, and then the others were just hacking They were horrendous. Yeah. And Jarrett's yeah. losing his head, like, fully. <laughs> we're waiting, like, 25 minutes on every tee, weren't we? And Jarrett's, you can't play like this. I can't get into a floor. <laughs> it's like, as though he's Tiger Woods. His handicap <laughs> he looked was, like Tiger Woods. Yeah, though, he? His handicap was about 28, and he was, I can't get into a floor. I just can't get going. <laughs> but, yeah, no, we were good, weren't we? Yeah, we won it. Um suited us really because we could just attack every pin and we was yeah just going for things it attack was pins good. are you acting like you're off two and five or something like that <laughs> we were good I've we? never seen a man practice as much as him and never get any better well, <laughs> we've not introduced you yet keep quiet sorry, sorry. Keep Shut quiet. Up. but no. yeah no it was a really good day obviously for, for the charity Go Again which I'm involved with um, so anybody who wants to look that up it's a really really good charity it's about helping lads who were released from football clubs and giving them another pathway and understanding like obviously the things that they go through in terms of like their mental health when they're released and things like that. So it's really, really good. Um, I might need them soon. I've been absolutely shite in previous <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> I have heard. I just don't know where I can go again now though. Please, please tell us what the Rochdale fans were singing to you when you came on. I think, well, no, nah, they weren't singing it, but someone shouted stick to podcasts. I'd only been on five minutes. <laughs> How's your head after that? Like, what did you do? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't concentrate on the game. That must be frustrating because you're not even that good at podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Where do I go from here? Where do you go? You're doing that charity of yours. Oh, right, okay. So, and we're going to introduce our guest and he's a really, really good friend of both of ours. I've known, I've known him probably, I was trying to work it out, I think 25 years 25 years. Probably the same for me, to be honest. Yeah. Since he was a, an apprentice, since he, we, we can go into it, since he used to clean my boots at Berry. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he, uh, we used to call him Tom the Tea Boy because I'd just like click my fingers, Tom, go make us a cup of tea, and he was good like that. He's, he's a good boy. Can silly, you, silly is boy. this true? Don't be so silly. He's Wait, let me introduce him. So, this is Tom Kennedy. Um, got a very famous. Famous family as well, aren't you, Paul? Yeah. We can talk about that. Mm. Talk about that as we get into it. But I first met Tom. Obviously, I was a um, a pro at Berry, a little bit older. You you see on camera, which is Definitely unbelievable, older. that he's younger Definitely than older. me. He's got more grey than my dad. <laughs> uh, but he came through as an apprentice. So yeah, uh, Tom Kennedy, welcome. Oh, we lads, all right. It's good to be here. Took you a while to get on, hasn't it? We must have asked you 20, 30 times, and you've always thought that you were better than us, but now. Got no other offers, so I had to scrape the barrel. <laughs> Come and see you two absolute reprobates. <laughs> uh, no, it was good. Like I say, we, we first met when you you was an apprentice, weren't you, at Berry? Yeah, so I, I did my whole sort of, it was Centre of Excellence back then. So I did that up until the age of 16, turned pro. 
I think it was about, I must have been 17 or coming up to 18 when you you, you left the RAF, hadn't you? Yeah, I'd, I'd left the RAF serving my country. They kicked you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad enough of you. <laughs> um, and then obviously, was it Priest or um, Graham Barrow that signed you? Uh, Andy Priest. Yeah. So, yeah, Priest was first manager that I had. And obviously, going back, our youth team was scattered with, with decent players. You know, I mean, yeah. we had like Dave Nugent, who just broke through. Cy Whaley and a bit younger, Colin Kazim Richards. So um, we had a good crop of players coming through. Um, said to sign, you like five years older than me, six years older than me. Look about 10. <laughs> Nicky Adams was there as well, weren't he? Yeah, so Nicky's, through, Nicky's a bit younger yeah. though. Um, he's, he's probably a year above Colin. Um, Dave Buchanan as well. Um, it's like proper characters. You know, yeah. I, I always say the same thing. Times have changed a little bit since they, they were back then. The grounding that we had was a lot different. You'd have thrived in it, pal. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> yeah. Was you out in Bury every week? Uh, every week. Every it's, just, week. it's just absolute carnage, you know, from cleaning boots, like like you said, cleaning the showers, cleaning the stands, sweeping snow off pitch, carrying the goals from Gig Lane down to Goshen. <laughs> Fuck that. Honestly, I, I, like, as an apprentice, you was abused a little bit, weren't you? Like yeah. in uh, Physically in and mentally. Of, yeah. In, <laughs> in terms of doing jobs yeah. and like, and the pros used to like, lean on get it. on you, didn't yeah, you? They, they'd yeah, they'd lean on it. You know, if you, if you stepped out of line, they're getting you you know, putting you in a bin or something like that and teaching you a little lesson, do you know what I mean, sort of thing. I remember, I, was, I wasn't his boot boy. I was Jamie Stewart. Now, if you do a bit of research on Jamie Stewart, Jamie he, was, he, was, he had a full set of veneers and everybody used to always ask him the question, why have you got a full set of veneers? Because he got knocked out in a fight. He was, <laughs> All, he was, he was a hard lad, yeah, wasn't he? very hard. He was very hard lad. And he was, I, I was scrubbing his boots for hours, mate, to make sure they were <laughs> pristine. And obviously you get like, obviously money at the end of the Christmas or the end of the season and stuff like that. And it was... It, we were on 50 quid, so it was obviously a big thing. Um, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, so Priestley um, obviously signed him. I got my first pro, um, then Priestley got the bullet, and that's when I started playing when Graham Barrow took over. Graham Barrow. Yeah, we had some good lads coming through. Under Priestley, you know? Yeah, probably, but I was just sort of getting myself in there. So he, he already put Nuge in, Cy Willie just broke in, um, and I was the next to probably Who go. were you behind? Was it Colin Woodthorpe who was the, the left back then? Yeah. So Colin was, he was, he was very stiff as well by that stage, weren't he? You know what? What a guy. Well, what a guy. brilliant guy. You know what I mean? He, he was probably coming up to 35, 36 then, but still steady, consistent every week, but just a lunatic. A lunatic in his own sort of grumpy, weird, weird way. Weird um, you lunatic. Know, I'm not sure if Nick had told the story when um, when he came on, but Cole was one of them. Didn't get out very often, but when he did, we were in, we were in Mulligan's one time. He's had his first pint and he's, he said... I feel like I can drink all day. <laughs> Within two hours, we're carrying him out of Mulligans, <laughs> putting him in a taxi and sending him on his way. Hammond. Yeah, he was a great guy. So he was just in front of me. Um, and then I bukes Kino, breathing down my neck, because he was probably a year or two below me. Um, and he was, you know, Bukes is like, he's enthusiastic, he's keen, he wanted my, my slot. So yeah, I, I tried him. doing that insurance with him. He is right. keen, isn't he? Yeah, Jesus. he loves it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, and, I, and I broke through and then... <laughs> Played under Graham Barrow for in, until unfortunately, I think Seth's got him the bullet, especially after Graham Barrow offered him out. <laughs> I've heard about this shit you've had, Steve. Uh, well, I can't, you can't I remember. Can't remember. Shock, you can't remember it. <laughs> yeah, but remember. he was a big guy, Graham yeah. Barrow. And he obviously, you know, he's six two, six three at least. Um, I remember him saying something about you having wing mirrors on your shoulders and not getting all of the ball for us one time. There he is. See, that was, yeah. <laughs> See, that's why I don't believe the story, like me not getting hold of it. Oh Jesus! <laughs> like bouncing, off your, yeah, bouncing off your out in the centre. What? So he's offered him out, and he's just sat there like a little child. <laughs> now, nah, to be fair, I think he had to go back, but obviously, you can't be going. Can't be hitting the manager. Can't be going decking the manager. <laughs> yeah, you know, not. To I think it'd feel me anyway. You're a big guy, big, guy. Big, big head, big, big, very big head. I wouldn't have. It has stuck one on me. I wouldn't have fancy that. Yeah, but you. I've seen a picture of you back in the day, and you are horrific. So I'm surprised you weren't scared of you. Yeah, thank you. So Tom put a picture of me on what I looked like when I was at Berry at like 21, 22. But you got to remember, growing up as a kid, I had really bad spots, like, <laughs> <laughs> really bad acne. It was like, it worked, they were more like just a rash all over my face constantly for about five years. And I had a stammer. Yeah, it's tough. So it was a tough, it was a tough upbringing. So, you must have got abused. Surely you got abused in the game. Got, yeah, of course I got abused all the time. So I think Jarrett told a story once where we used to go to college one day, one day a week, and he was sat right at the front with his group of girls on the next table. And as I've walked in, 
Like you've heard the phrase, um, fit from far, fit from far, but far oh, from fit. fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as I've walked in, these these group of girls have like must have said, "Oh, he, he looks nice." And as I've come closer, they've gone, "Oh, look at his spots." <laughs> <laughs> and Jarrett being Jarrett, couldn't wait to tell me. <laughs> so, so yeah, I've got yeah. Uh, so what bring you? Is that why you like bringing. chocolate now? Yeah, that's what it is. What um, what sort of a player were you back then? Is that get it out of my feet and just drill it in the channel pretty much. <laughs> yeah, just clip <laughs> just it. Just literally get it out of the feet, feed it in the channel. Because obviously, you know, in them days, football was probably a little bit different. You know, it yeah, wasn't it was... always about ball playing. Um, you know, touches wise, it was a case of, I played with, you know, Dave Challoner, um, Woody, you know, we had Leon's with it right back at the time at Berry and stuff like that. And it was more sort of get out of your feet, get it forward, play off the, the front man, um, squeeze up the pitch. Don't, you know, them old boys didn't want to be getting turned and defending. Yeah. You know, I remember Charlie saying to me one day, you ain't going nowhere. And I was like, well, I want to get forward. He was like, you dream of it. You don't even dream of it. Do you know what I mean? Sort of thing. Because you had to cover it. Yeah, because he wanted me in the channel. Yeah, if he yeah. went behind him, he says, I'll just filter in at centre half. You get chasing that ball. I was like, all right, then no problem. Because you, you obviously respect to your elders. You played yeah. as they want you to play sort of thing. So yeah, I was out my feet. That's gone out of the game, by the way. Oh yeah, there's no cover from fullbacks these days. Well, there's no cover. There's no respect, no respect <laughs> yeah. from young no, boys. That's it. Jesus Christ. But, but that all goes back to like being an apprentice though. Like you were scared of the first the f- first team players, weren't you? Or like you scared of not like setting the girls up or the cones or the getting the like the balls and the boots ready. Like, which is all it's like, character building though. E- e- even walking into the first team. It's character building. It's, it's that resilience. It's that sort of like respect that you have and you should have for the first team. But I suppose it's a lot different now because obviously we were around them every day. Whereas, you know, the youngsters these days aren't really around the first team players till quite a bit later on. Yeah. You know, they're not trained with them every day or they're not sort of socialising the dress rooms with them like we were. We were around that environment from, a, from an early age, which I wouldn't change for the world because... I believe it takes you onto another level of, of having that sort of resilience, that character building, going into different things, you know, in the game and after the game. Do you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I always say the same thing. My youth team managers, you know, my the players that I played with at a youth team, they, they created an environment that was quite hostile and quite tough. But in the same sense, it sort of, I think most of the people in my youth team kind of went on to do okay after that because they had that resilience and that sort of like roughness to a degree that, you know, you you can't abused every single day. Yeah. I, I can't remember many sort of weeks where there wasn't a fight in training or there wasn't like somebody absolutely battering up to oh, we'll lock the changing room doors and people would be having a set too. Yeah. Whereas that just doesn't happen these days because everything's so social media orientated and stuff like that. Whereas I think that helped us going forward with our resilience and our, you know, characters who, you know, to take us, you know, onto different things that we've done in the future and stuff like that. Everything now, social media, like if we was going on a team night out last year, they'd be like, don't put a thing on yeah. social media. Just not a thing. Because anything can be said in the background. Anything yeah, yeah. is just like, it's not worth it. Just don't and that's, look. like, no disrespect, that's alter. Yeah. Like, imagine if, you, if you're if you like one of the top Premier League Championship clubs, things like that. It's just... And going oh, back to respect, respect, I somehow got the captaincy at Alter, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Great captain I was. Um, Leader. But I told a young lad, Chris Con Clark, he was just doing nothing in training. And I was just like, will you fucking pull your finger out? You're one of our best players. Just fucking show it. And he just went, I can't wait for you to retire. <laughs> I was like, I'm 33. He was like, yeah, but you're crap. <laughs> when you was a captain. And I was like, wow. What, Cheers, what, do you, what do you say back there? Yeah. Like, unless you're having a fight, then there's nothing you can say back. That's the difference. Whereas back in the day, there would have been a fight. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And I've been in that position where, you know, I could look at a senior pro wrong when I was at Berry, and it, Oh, I was in trouble. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I remember from youth team stepping up to the first team, we'd play. I, sometimes I'd play on a Saturday. Who was your the, youth team coach? So I had two. I, Andy well, Feely. Andy Feely was one. Yeah, Feely, what a guy. He was, you know, <laughs> uh, what do you say? He's he, unbelievable coach about getting the best out of people, but his methods were, I would say, a little bit left field. Yeah. Um, you know, a uh, little bit ruthless, a little in. bit, well, finding players for not shaving so he could, you know, spend the money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe down bar every night, yeah, local Weber spoons or something like that. <laughs> but getting the shaving, best. What, shaving like your beard. He'd just walk in and say, "Wrong kit might be the right kit." You're not shaved, and you're like, "I have." He'd say like, <laughs> "Could have said that to me." Yeah. I know. <laughs> you've not had your hair cut. You've I done this. You've done that. You take about forty quid off the your spots. You know, and we're on fifty quid, and yeah. he'd, he'd be local local Weber spoons after training. Do you know what I mean? Mate, he can drink that boy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. He come to Rami after. Yeah. Um, when I was about sixteen. 
And I was definitely the best player at Rami. And he just will not play me for some reason. <laughs> I, just, I don't know why. To this day, I ask him, he goes, I don't know, I just didn't like you. <laughs> but he was, uh, his methods were like, you know, off the chart for getting the best out of players. Yeah. In, 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 a, in a bad way, probably now, because he you know, wouldn't have been able to do it. But in a, well, he wouldn't last in a job now, he would you? But he think about how many players he brought through just yeah. from that, just, just from that like, kind of apprenticeship. Yeah. To the lads, like, like like you mentioned a few. Yeah, like Nuge, Cy Whaley. Um, so David Nugent obviously went on playing the Prem. Yeah. Scored England. for England. Scored for England. I know. Well, it, from in, a yard. Obviously, I played with him again in future, isn't he? Honestly, never sure about it. Really? <laughs> one in one. Or constantly one in one. 100%. 100% record. Love Nuge. Love Nuge. He used to always come out this one. Enjoy um, work after uh, football, boys, because I won't be working. <laughs> he used to always say that. <laughs> I say, you fucking bastard. <laughs> Why did he go on to do... Yeah, like, well, he had a great career, didn't he? Oh, do you know what I mean? From, from, you know, from Portsmouth back to Leicester when I, when, when I saw him and stuff like that. So, no, he did, you know, unbelievable things um, from a you know a lad just from Liverpool. And he, yeah. was, he, was, he was crazy. He's, you know, I remember him when he first came through. He turned up in a shell suit track suit, proper typical scouser. Yeah. Looked about 30. And I, we were all thinking, like, you know, obviously I was quite small. And, he had a weird run as well. Yeah, Such but he was rapid. Yeah, just literally, rapid. like, you know, he would catch a piece of, Paper, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, stick him on. Catch very... a piece of paper. I've never heard that you not... before. <laughs> no. In the wind. In no. the wind. <laughs> <laughs> New on that no, one. Yeah, so You'll be using that soon. Yeah. <laughs> you could catch a piece of paper in wind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then I had Andy Hill, as, um, and Andy Hill was ex City, uh, yeah. Port Vale. Great guy. Different methods, more orthodox, but very challenging. You know, he'd always sort of say, like, well, not sure you're going to make it and this. And that was just pure his way of trying to get the best army, you know, personalities, you know, making sure that. So the- as a young lad, a coach used to, uh, I'd say to you, I don't think you're going to make it. Yeah. I think, it, you know... If, what, and what, that was his way of... of- because he knew I had a, probably had a bit of a chip on my shoulder in regards to the fact of I was probably one of the better players even from the YTS days and, you know, youth team and stuff yeah. like that. He always wanted me to sort of go again, not be sort of sat in my comfort zone. And he'd do that to challenge me. He'd do that to sort of, you know, cause, you know, he'd see on a game that I was probably finding it a little bit easy. He'd be saying like, "Well, you probably that's not really good enough. I don't think you're going to make it." Do you think that comes a little bit from the, like we touched on before, the Kennedy name? So, so like, I don't, like you, you'll know about is it your uncle? uncle? Yeah, uncle yeah. Al, yeah. So go on. Uncle Al obviously was you know he was Liverpool legend. Uh, by Alan Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, Alan Kennedy. You know, played, you know, in, in the Liverpool era that won everything. You know, yeah. he's got two uh, winning goals in two European Cup finals. <laughs> won FA Cup, won leagues, you know, won, won, won everything you can possibly imagine. Um, under Shankly and I think Paisley as well, uh, played in the, 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 the probably greatest Liverpool team, yeah. the teams. Um, and, and obviously, I always had a great relationship with my uncle. My dad obviously played for Barry for 10 years, so I had that sort of stigma as well because dad had a testimonial, all the Liverpool legends turned up. It was like a, a big thing. Um, my uncle played. I had that sort of association uh, from early, especially when, obviously, my dad had moved to Barry when he was 21, I think. Funny story with, with my dad was that he broke through at Newcastle um, on the fringes of the first team. I think he was maybe 21, something like that. Uh, got into the first team, last game of the season. I was thinking, I'm going to get a new contract here. Like, done done well. You know, I'm only 21 year old. So he's gone to the, meet the manager and whoever was deciding. And they've said, Sorry, sorry, sorry son, you're not, not going to get a new contract. We're going to re- um, release you. And he's gone, Well, well why? And they've said, Well, your younger brother's two years younger and he's ten times better than you. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. My dad was just like, oh, for God's sake. So, and dad ended up getting a move down to Bury, and then obviously the rest is history. Yeah. I met my mum and whatnot. Um, and my uncle, obviously. It's all gone downhill from there. It's all gone downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great English Barry teacher, boy. by the way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, taught, yeah. Taught yeah. yeah. Mrs. Kennedy taught yeah. me English. <laughs> I think she got Not just you. Rather. You know what? Chalk what and you, cheese. What you get sacked for? <laughs> Behave yourself. Um, <laughs> Talk Kieran as well. Trippier. Yeah. So same year as you. Um, said that he was probably slightly worse behaved than you, which says no something. one. The the classes that Kieran Trippier was in, no one got taught a thing. There was like rubbers flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Everyone had their own laptop. Lovable rogue. Yeah. Lovable rogue he was. There was no teaching going on in them. But classes. you like. You told me a story. I can't remember you, Tom, or, or you, Jordan, was saying that he was that good. He, he'd like throw a ball down on floor, and there'd be a teacher like hundred no, yards away. It's the same dinner lady every day. It was oh, was tight. it? Yeah, she was called Bernie. <laughs> and he'd go, "I'm gonna ping her in head yeah. from hundred yards." And he was that accurate that he did. He was that he? good. He'd just ping her like straight off a barnet. <laughs> or like he'd pick really? like you know, like 
really small year sevens who were like the youngest in the class and like Tiny. they just had nothing to a massive blazer on it just put the ball down the yard and go he's getting knocked clean out now and just zing one right at his head <laughs> <laughs> we was like, wow. So accurate though yeah, as well. It was, yeah, it was a joke. Or he'd put one down and say, that basketball loop over there and just like clip it right in. And you'd just be like, wow. Yeah, he was a shambles. Not a sixpence guy. Even, you know, literally technical ability was... Yeah. Even was at that age. And I was, I'm six years older than you. And I could, you could see it then. Playing in school matches and stuff like that. He was way above. Yeah, he weren't allowed to play because City won't let him play. No. Um, oh, was it Man City when he was at school? Yeah, so, so he, he would always go and train with them. But if we had a game, we'd go and pick him up from wherever he was because <laughs> we needed good. him. So like, oh, on, really? on the minibus, we'd pick him up. He'd look at like side at roll with his boots, like get in. And sometimes, like the gaffer would say, "Listen, I don't want to take the piss with City, so just go on the bench. If we need you, we'll bring you on." We were getting beat one 0 in the final. Brought him on. He scored two from like forty yards out. We won. Was it that good? That good. Was it? Yeah. He's just so cocky as well. And so yeah, too good. Yeah. Confident in his Not own cocky. Ability. Cocky's a bad word. because Confident in his own yeah, ability. He was such a sound guy. But he just knew he was unbelievable. And he just knew how good he was and took the piss. Tiki, what, what's your... Tiki. 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 <laughs> Tiki. Tiki. What's your, um, what's your take on, on all the pre, pre-season stuff? Lads filming themselves all... I, I can't remember. I can't remember doing that, can you? No, when we were... Get you a move now, though. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that's why a lot of people do it, <laughs> yeah. don't they? If you're busy on Instagram, yeah. yeah. These days, it's, it's risk and reward, isn't it? It depends, obviously. Like, lads don't really let themselves go, so they, they quite enjoy it, probably doing it. Whereas back in the day for us, you know, we were going away, you know, on a whether it's a Dublin trip or it's a Magaluf trip and stuff like that. And if we were back in on the 1st of July, for instance, I didn't do any running whatsoever till 1st of July. And I, would, I think, like... There's that many people doing it now. Everyone else thinks I'm gonna to have to do it. My only cardio would be what I got on the Magaluf strip right. for two weeks. You're talking about females, there. You're talking yes. to your right. <laughs> I, I, would, I would get my you, cardio in. You've grown way. out your spotty face by now. You, <laughs> yeah. you, you were doing bits, right? Yeah, right. I, would, I were doing bits after. Yeah, after my spots had gone, that's where I'd get my cardio in. Right, Magaluf strip. With your string vest on. <laughs> can you remember? I can't remember his name, but can you remember? There was a guy who was going to buy Berry Football Club. A Turkish geezer. A Turkish guy. And he his brought son, his... Edward Tagalazaru or something like that. He brought he his called. son in. Yeah. And he signed It signed like a two-year deal, didn't it? He signed a two-year deal. What, and, and he then came never bought the club? Us. I swear and to God. Mate, he was horrendous. I, like, you couldn't think... Genuinely, you could go walk down to local booze around here, pick a guy any age, and he would have been a better footballer than this guy. <laughs> and he got him. a two-year deal. Yeah. He got a two-year deal, but like we signed him because... His dad was putting money into the his club. Dad, well, yeah, and his dad was going to buy the club. And he so this guy come down, he bib on, look Turkish, didn't yeah. he? You think, oh, like maybe he's like skillful. Oh, my God. Couldn't even he started, he was horrendous. He had an ass about the width of this table. He was, on, <laughs> he was on more money than me, and he'd signed a two-year deal, and... It came to the end of it. Did he? I think he made his debut at one point. Yeah, didn't they he? had to bring yeah, him on. I think they had to bring him. So he came on, and then his dad. I should say this, but his dad pulled out. <laughs> his, 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 dad, his dad couldn't have pulled out ninety <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so his dad. The worst thing was the, the lad was the only club. on. He did buy the club. The lad was only on ninety quid, so he must have been about eighty quid. <laughs> about Eighty-five, yeah. 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 So he didn't. He's just done all that and then not bought it. Yeah, then didn't buy it. So it was there, two year deal. The culture was so much different back then, though. You could get away with things like that because nobody really even knew about it. Yeah, was there not a player once that lied about his CV and got to the Prem? Was it? No, it was Georgie Weir's yeah. cousin or something. Yeah. Wasn't it? And he's, I think someone signed him. Was it Graham Sooner? Graham Sooner signed yeah. him for Southampton. Yeah. Just looked at this piece of paper. Just, like, yeah, Georgie Weir's cousin. He brought him in. His CV was phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> brought, him, brought him on as sub. About cool. six minutes later, sub subbed him. Yeah, never played again. <laughs> like, his kid's bad. But the culture was so much different back then. Like, we were talking the other day about we 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 grew up in a quite tight knit group didn't we do you know what I mean yeah. um, like lads the local lads that sort of went out together socialised together you know I remember we used to go to Welly on a Sunday um, local pub near us and it got quite famous didn't it in the sense of yeah, people yeah. come from different parts because it was it was always lively know, lively you know on a Sunday now it doesn't really probably happen as much but the no. Sunday club was quite big and um, it, it was a case of where at that time I wanted to drink 
what I wanted to drink, like Blue Wicked, basically. <laughs> like you drink now. Is that what you used to like drink? Blue Wicked. Yeah, Blue Wicked or Smirnoff Ice. Or, you know, we had them. He was always a Smirnoff Ice. Yeah, they were like yeah. VKs. You had like VKs and, and stuff like two that. Two for a quid. Yeah, <laughs> so I would go into the welly and say like, can I get one of them? But obviously I was just turned 18 year old lad and the older boys were there and they were like, nah, mate, you're having a pint. <laughs> and I was like, I don't like a pint. And they were like, no, you're having a pint. So we'd play pool and I'd have to force myself to drink pints because they wouldn't let me have so they're a kitty wouldn't let me have anything else so I'm, I'm like an 18 year old lad and I, I'm like literally like put my I done that <laughs> neck in half of it and then doing it again but they wouldn't let me drink anything else um, good you've definitely got the taste for it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You it's, all, it's held me in good stead over the years to tell you that now <laughs> yeah. what happened to you then because you don't even like a pint now I don't like I'm not a lager man no you're not no not I went out man. after the golf Sunday and what did I I ordered a pint and you went can I have an amaretto and coke yeah and champagne like, please oh. No, I think I had a Copperberg. Oh, God. Mixed fruit Copperberg. Oof. And then I had a, uh, started on Aper- Amaretto's and Coke. Jeez. And Aperol Spritz. Game's gone, mate. Game's gone. Game's <laughs> gone. I think, it was yeah. some squad on Sunday, wasn't it? Me, yeah. you, Jarrett, and my missus. <laughs> it was mental. <laughs> I know, which is weird because we've all slept with her. <laughs> <laughs> I hope her dad doesn't listen to this. So. I can't believe you just brought that <laughs> in. Can we, can we cut that? Please, Corey. No. <laughs> bring, bring that in. Bring that in. I, I like that one. So go on, yes, and then on Monday morning we'd turn up. Yeah, Graham Barrow was old school, so he he knew what was going on. He knew that us lads would go out maybe Saturday, Sunday, sometimes Tuesday, um, which wasn't professional, it wasn't great, wasn't big and it wasn't clever, but we did it because it was just the culture that we were around at that time. Uh, and we'd have, on a, on a Monday morning, we'd come in and the bibs would be set out. We'd go down to Lower Gig or Goshen and he'd say, lads that were out yesterday, get your bibs on, lads that weren't go on that side we'll have 88 <laughs> just sweat it out with you, whatever's going on and this was pretty much every Monday and he knew it because obviously he was old school and he's from that sort of culture and you'd have like the likes of me sometimes you if you're allowed um, Swaz Danny Swales um, Matty Barris Lee Connell um, I wouldn't say Jarrett because he wouldn't have come out probably Paul O'Shaughnessy um, Martin Forrest um, Rest his soul um, like a, a, a decent Group of real lads, real good squad, real good squad. Over squad versus... uh, yeah. and, and and it'd be a sweat out, you know, where lads, it was accepting you weren't hiding. Whereas these days, obviously, you can't get away with stuff like that, you know. Uh, but it was a piss team via sober team, and it'd be every every single Monday morning. They the the days of Solviva before it got Sol Viva. you know, anybody that was around Barry, and I know you're a bit younger, so you caught the back end of it. But anybody's around them days, you know, what is it from probably two thousands up to maybe two thousand and ten, something like that. You know that if you went out in Bury on a Saturday, it was a decent place to be. Yeah. I know, I know ta- towns have died a death now in the sense of most people going to Manchester or you know wherever. Bury was an absolute yeah, it was class place to be. You know, it's like a super club. It was it was, it was, it, was <laughs> yeah. it was just like you'd know everybody. You know, it, it, it was good environment. You know, obviously when we were younger, you know a lot of females, which was fantastic. You know, <laughs> whereas all that everybody goes into Manchester now and spends. You know, three, four hundred quid a night out. Yeah, it's crap. We could go to Sol Weaver and then ten quid. Go out with twenty and come back with a tenner. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, the chairman at Ratcliffe, he does all the the bouncers. Oh, does that Manchester security? Yeah, yeah. I said, if you've got them pricks on Albert Sauce, I can't stop. Oh. <laughs> Fucking kick me out about eight times. They kick anybody out then. Oh, just, yeah, but is it deserved? I no, kick you out for a reason. <laughs> just, your just, face, just your face. Yeah, just your face. Just his gear. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, they're not bouncers, they're fashion police. <laughs> See, they start, when you start doing that stupid dance, they think, get him out oh, now. No, they're, them days are gone. Your Are T-Rex they? dance. Yeah. Right, Jordan, obviously we've got Sky Fantasy Football, our new sponsors of the podcast. Cheers, guys. Yeah, which is brilliant. Uh, we need to think of a team name. Yeah, I thought maybe Corey's Tash. What do you think? Corey's Tash. I like it. <laughs> well, Strong. That is why it's there. Unlike his Tash. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, but we'll think of a... We'll get a team name going and we're going to challenge our listeners to whoever is top of the league by the end of August. Yeah. There'll be a prize. Maybe a cash prize. Big cash prize. I big think. cash prize. And the winners can then challenge us to a round of golf, double or nothing. Yeah, sounds good to me, yeah. Very good. If you want to enter, the the pin or the code is on our socials. So it'll be on the Instagram and the Twitter. Bring it on. Who, who were the big characters then when you went to Rochdale? Well, it wasn't any bigger than fl- Flickers. Did, from the fl- actually the assistant. Oh, the assistant manager. The he, assistant manager. Dave Flickcross, brilliant today. He's, he's, back in them days, he obviously, 
he was an assistant manager, but he wasn't. He was like one of the players. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He, he was world apart, and Hilly would, would sort of jump in and out of it. Um, but Flickers was just mental. That's like us, John and Byrne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can't get a word in for them to turn it out. So. But that's what I'm saying. That they're creating that environment yeah. like you boys want. You know, we did it sort of, what would it be now? You know, 20 years ago or something like that, you know, maybe 15 years ago. Some, you know, they create that environment then. Obviously, it's changed now because of the professionalism. In the, but they created that sort of, we're all in it together. You know? Did you win the league with them? No, we got beat in the playoff final that year. Right. We, How long were you there for? For three years. And we got playoff final, playoff semi-final, then promotion. Was Dawson where you there? Craig. Ah, oh, Craig. Yeah. yeah, Craig Dawson. He you, was, you've so, told me about him. Craig's one of the weirdest men you'll ever meet in your life. But I was going to say, he won't be out with you, will he? No, so Craig came, he came probably the second or third season. I was there, maybe the third season um, when we got promoted. I think it was the third season because he scored 15 headers from 15 of my set pieces. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? He was top, pretty much top scorer that season. 15 assists? I think, I think genuinely, I'd say out of the 15, I had about 12 assists. Just literally, he would say, just hang it for me. And he would, he'd would be like a bulldozer, the back post. Like, and I, and I, you've got to give people credit, credit where it's due. He'd come from Radcliffe. And I've never seen a professional to this day. You've told hard, me about this. Work yeah. as hard as him. I think he scored twenty five for Ratcliffe or something. Yeah, twenty five headers. Off. Yeah, but, but off. it's not a case of where it was luck, or it's a case of where it was natural, you know, born talent. This boy worked every day. Like, go on, give his, us some examples. Then. So, so we were trained at the Cliff at the time. No, Littleton Road, sorry. And he would, st- he would. He'd be, he's a competitor in training and he wouldn't like to get beat. And at, at them times, we had some good players and they were getting the better of him a lot. Yeah. So he, he didn't like that, you know, and I, and I think if you've ever heard anybody on other podcasts speak about Craig Dawson, it's it's a case of where he trains like he, he plays. He's, yeah. he's, he's physical, he'll step on your feet. He's clumsy, but he, he, he quite likes the fact that he's clumsy. He can't, you can't really rile him up. You know, like I think Troy Deeney was saying one time that Dawson was mivering with pulling his shirt and stuff like that. He was like, get on my face. Dawson was just focused, silent, you know. Killing with sort of like that that stare of like I'm not going to get angry. He doesn't get angry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but he, he we, it what you go for you in training? Go for he, 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 he train like he wanted to play. Do you know right. what I mean? Um, and he'd stay behind behind training, and he'd ask me to knock up thirty balls, straight ones, diags, corners when he's attacking them, defending corners, and he'd he'd ask me to stay up behind. He'd ask other people to stay up behind. But one of the big things that he did work on with, and he did it with flicks, was his probably five yard pace moving his feet quicker because he, what he realised was is that we had like Daggers, Adam LaFondre, um, not, I think Muzz had gone by then, but they were quick off the mark. They were quick at getting a yard on him. Yeah. So he needed to move his feet quicker. How old was he then? Dawes probably, he came a bit late, 23, young, yeah. 23 something maybe. Well, not young, but yeah. If that's See, like no, he's probably younger, he's probably 18, 19, yeah, when he, yeah. he's about five years younger than me. Yeah, he's probably younger than that. So, right. But he would work every day on it, every day. And Flix would work with him and, and he'd ask players to work with him and stuff like that to just improve himself of what he wasn't Good at, but also yeah. like he did probably forty diags a day, uh, after training every day, and he loved the diag, like literally the diag dose yeah. or dose diag, whatever you want to put it. Look, look, <laughs> like look, look where he's ended up. He's probably played ten years in a prem, hasn't he now? Um, like when you talk about careers, like uh, and that sustainability of being at the top level. Yeah, you know, I, th- I think a lot of people would have maybe thought that he was done when he when he I think he was at West Brom and he went to West Ham. Yeah, and then he reinvented himself again at West Ham and became a, a cult hero there, uh, but. He's was he prob- not tight as fuck? I've heard oh. he was tight. His brother borrowed a but washing he machine did, off him. He didn't drink or anything, did no, he? No, he doesn't drink and it, like, look. What did I, he do? His, brother his brother's washing machine broke because he played with me at Ramy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> Dawson, who you played with, yeah. said, you can have mine or something like that. And then six months later, he said, have you got that money for that washing machine? So I'm not getting it back. He was on like 20 grand a week or something. No, like that. he do that. He wouldn't buy a coffee. It's like, I've met, I've met him and he, he, he stand at the till and he's like, I'm like, you're getting these doors or what? And he's like, you're not getting them. I was like, get, get the coffees in, you tight bastard. <laughs> yeah, what, he just want he, No, he, he's just, just I, think, I think he's just, I don't know, it's, it's obviously a glitch in his system or something like that. But, <laughs> he's but definitely he came, a robot, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he's a robot. Because when he came to Roxdale, he, he was socially awkward, do you know what I mean? In the sense of, he'd probably never been around this, this environment before. I know he'd yeah. been at Radcliffe, but that's sort of like, where he foots in, but he foots also out because it's part-time. This was full on every day. And I always talk about, in some dressing rooms, you can sink, you can swim. Like you can have either absorb the punishment because the ruthless environments. Yeah. You either absorb it and you like laugh it off and you take it and you smile. And I used to say, you used to have this like cheeky little smile, Dawes, like a bit weird, a bit creepy. <laughs> but you'd hammer him. You'd hammer him about so many different things. And I won't go into some of the things. Yeah. And he'd do this creepy little smile at you. Because <laughs> he half found it funny. Yeah. But he half found it like, 
leave me the fuck alone, lads. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's character building. And for me, it's it was a sink or swim moment for him in them times because he obviously improved himself dramatically in the sense of a playing ability, but it, his character had to sort of come through as well. Yeah. To, and he did that. Coming to the end of like your time at Rochdale, you've spent that time with us, you've seen his mentality. You then got a big move to, to Leicester. Biggish, yeah. Biggish. biggish. They were in the championship then, were they? Yeah, we'd have we'd had a great time at Rochdale, probably three of the best years in my footballing career because yeah. I was not on particularly great money. Do you know what I mean? It was just a case of where the environment that you're in every day, you look forward to going in because one, you're winning, which is a massive thing in football, yeah. but two, you're around people that you cared about, people that you you got along with. Good yeah. bonds. That's, that's a big thing to, to go into uh, training every day because you, you, from the outside looking in, people don't realise you're with these people every single day. Yeah, you yeah. form friendships where you, when you're with somebody, it's like you're never not going to be with that person. Well, they, be, they yeah, become your best you're mates. Yeah, you're not with them. You fuck off. Do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like they become your best mates in your family. Yeah. But then two weeks later, you can leave. You're gone. You forget about them. You're gone. And you've got a new best friend. Yeah. It's mad. Yeah. It's mad. But, so was you nervous when that call came in then to go to Leicester? Oh, well, I wouldn't say I was nervous, but it was, I remember because we were playing Barnet away last game of the season, and. Um, my agent had been on to me and he'd said, Doncaster want you. And that was when Sean O'Dris was in championship. Sean O'Dris was a manager and he was a really good manager, really good coach. And I'd met him, services up at, um, on the 62, I think Hearts Head or somewhere like that. Well, sexy, by, sexy, sexy meeting there for the <laughs> services. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the service. Man, all the time, pal. How are you doing? Yeah. Um, so basically, we'd, 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 I, I was pretty much content I was going to sign at Doncaster. Um, so I'd, I'd had to, agents gone to me, rung me on, we're travelling down to Barney, rung me on the coach on the way and he said, you have to go and see Hilly. Hilly's in a pair of sloggies at the front of the coach, right? Because he's he used to get a hot, big bear Hilly, and he's in a pair of sloggies. And he said, "What do you mean pair of sloggies? Sat in his underpants." Yeah, he used to wear. <laughs> what? So, oh, what? Let's just. Like, I feel like you skipped over that. Quite sorry, quickly. I thought it was common knowledge. <laughs> no. So you're on the team bus. Yeah. Manager sat at the front. He gets because he gets hot. He's sat in his undies. So on on <laughs> long trips, whether it was sometimes to the game, like in the sense of a away trip or yeah. coming back. Hilly would be in a pair of sloggies and he'd be walking up and down the bus <laughs> with a pair of sloggies on, big bear of a man. He'd have a t-shirt on with his underpants. Or... Not always, sometimes. <laughs> just, depends, on what he got. Yeah. depends on what he got. Uh, but he... Has he got a big hairy body as well? Oh yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a big gorilla. He's a, man. a bear, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, seen him the other day, he's, he's in great shape. Now, to be fair, but back then he was, he was carrying a bit. Um, so, Agent rang me, he said, look, can't Richie get injured? Hang on, so what were the lads saying? <laughs> he was, I can't like, get past this yet. No, we, we, this has been going on for, this is, this is Keith. three years down the yeah, line. We, this is the chief, we call him the chief, the king. You know what I mean? He, he does what he wants to do. And if he wants to wear, wear a pair of sloggies, he's wearing a pair of sloggies. So I've gone down to the front and said, chief, can I have words? Need to speak about the game tomorrow? He said, no. Do you call him chief as well? I call him chief, yeah. So I said, can I have a, can I have a word with you? Um, he says, no. He says, um, we'll get down there and we'll have a chat. So I said, all right. His ball hanging out. Yeah. Oh, it gets, it gets even worse. So I think we've, we've, um, we've had an evening meal, still won't speak to me. Got to the next day. He was uh, dressed by the, he was, did, he Evening just, meal, he, was, he, was, he had his clothes on. Right, okay. So, and, Thank God. So my team. agent at the time, he rang me and he said, TK, you need to go and see the manager and tell him you, you don't want to play because you've potentially got a move to Doncaster coming up and it's thingy. So I've gone into his... I'm going to knock... I'm, Gonna knock on his room. I'm knowing that's a hard conversation. It is, even though we, we had a great relationship, like you know, solid, solid people. Yeah. But in the same sense, it was still that awkward moment of saying you don't want to play because Keith at that time was like, you know, I mean, fucking LTK, <laughs> giving it all this like yeah, sort of yeah. thing. So knocks the door, and he, he, my agent was his agent, so he didn't know what was coming, but he just wanted to play up to it. Oh, so right, I knocked okay. the door, doors open, and he's he's in his sloggies again. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, for fuck's sake. So he goes and lies in his bed. <laughs> I'm thinking, is this his hotel room? Yeah, in his hotel room. He's laying on his bed. He's laying on his bed. <laughs> so I'm, st- I'm stood there, just a bit awkward, like, and I'm going, like, gaffer, like, I to Where him. are you stood? So you stood at the end, end of the, of the bed, bed. End of the bed. He's, loaded, sit, did, he's loading it up and he's slogging his trying to, was trying to think of somewhere I can sit and I was thinking, I don't want to really perch in the end of the bed here because it looked a bit awkward. How is he like? I just, just, just looked <laughs> like, like this. Like yeah, no, he actually was. I think he was like, actually, no, I think he was actually like that. Head back and he was like, come on. You've been fucking mad. Come on, jump on. <laughs> <laughs> right, drop him. He's like, drop him. Uh, but, and he just, he, he obviously knew what was coming because I know for a fact my agent would have said to him, like, Keith, TK's going to come in and speak to you. But yeah. he, he wanted to lay it on thick. Uh, so he said, like, come on, let's fucking hear it. And I, he said, before you start, he said, I say I was on a grand a week at the time at Rochdale. He was like, I'll give you 1,500 quid. You sign a year. And it, when I get my move, I'll take you wherever I go. And I was like, Keith, I'm like, 
I don't want to sign for fifteen hundred quid. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to play the championship. Like, <laughs> come on, you can you, one more year, one more. Give me one more year. And I'm like, like this is, I'm getting off. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't want to say it, but no. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he said, like, all right, you don't want to play. Is that is that what you represent yourself? I've you know I've looked after you for three years. I've took you out the doldrums of Berry, and now you don't want to play for me. I said, there's nothing. We've already promoted. So we're already promoted this oh, season. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, we're already done and dusted. Yeah, so yeah. We, we got promoted, I think, two weeks before at Northampton. Um, anyway, he, 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 he laughed and he said, yeah, no problem, because he, he was only winding me up. Yeah. Get yourself out. And I was like... Oh. Just before you go, you don't know what this is, do you? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this walnut whip here, this walnut whip. <laughs> yeah, so he, 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 he sort of, um, he okayed it and didn't play. And I was dead, I went, um, I, I went away before I signed at Donny, went to Portugal. And I was about three or four days into the trip to Portugal and... Phone phone goes, it's agent, and he says, um, Leicester want to sign you. Uh, spoke to Steve Walsh, who was head of recruitment there at the time. Great guy, and he spoke to Nigel Pearson and um, Craig Shakespeare, and they, re- they want you to sign. What do you think? And obviously the deal was better because Leicester were a bigger club than um, Doncaster. Doncaster at the time. So I said, yeah, what's the crap? Like, they wait until I get back. And they said, nah, they want to fly you back tomorrow, first thing, so 7 a.m. flight, and then they'll fly you straight back to Portugal. And I was like, well, I'm Never met the manager, never met, you know, thing like he was like, Don't worry. They're they're how many, be- how many beers deep as well we have, yeah. aren't <laughs> Oh no, I it's was on the old town. I, 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 I wasn't. I was, I, was, I was with my ex, so it was like and she didn't drink, so I was sensible Simon then, oh, you know right. what I mean? Sort of thing. So it was like I wish I was, but I wasn't. Um so they flew me back to I think it was East Midlands or something like that, flew me back, signed, boxed everything off, but not really met any of the team. And then uh, got a phone call as I landed back from Big Nige. Big Nige says Tom, he said, what are you doing now? I said, oh, I'm just going back to the hotel. He was like, well, what hotel you saying? I was saying the Tivoli Marina, so you literally are on the, yeah, on yeah. the marina and the Lamora. He went, well, me, uh, Shakesy and uh, Steve Walsh are in Figo. Do you want to come down for a pint? I was like, fucking hell, yeah, I'll do so this, so this is the manager of the team you've just signed yeah. for, you've never met? Never met. In Figo's bar. In Figo's, mate. Figo's so I walked bar. down, had a beer. Oh, I think we had two. I had a couple of beers and just, you get, like, like, I love Nigel. I think he, he was great for... Long story short, probably the two weeks that he was actually there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he left two weeks later. <laughs> oh, no. So, but anyway, he, he said, like, you're going to be competing with Bruno Berner. Bruno was Swiss international, like, model pro. Unbelievable, like, professionalism. Been at great clubs. Um, he said, you're going to be competing, my, my two left backs. He said, obviously, you're a bit younger. Bruno's a bit older, but it's, good, it's a good mix. Um, can't so wait you weren't even coming in as a starting left back? Not de- guaranteed. No. He made that clear, which I didn't mind. I think right, right, okay. at that stage of my career, I'd, I'd back myself to, to do well and, and, and push Bruno anyway. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And Leicester was a big club there. Um, I think Mandarich was the, the owner at the time, but we'll obviously sold it later on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I'd met him, gone back to my holiday. Um, I think it was maybe, I don't know, two weeks, maybe at tops, maybe 10 days. I picked up, well, Sky Sports News has come up and Nigel Pearson left to go to Hull. <laughs> So I was like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> Big Niger just promised me the world and now he's he's, he's gone he's gone to Hull. So he he left and Who I mean, came in? Paolo Sosa to start with. And if you don't know Paolo Sosa album, people will like ex Dorf. Have we not had him spoke about before? I don't know, I can't remember. Legend, like as I think he might have been a bass. As a player who was he was unbelievable, unbelievable player, sent midfielder like yeah. absolute silk, had an unbelievable career. Um he'd come in bit like myself on the ball. Yeah, <laughs> just like him. Uh, he basically come in and obviously brought in quite a few foreigners, stuff like that. Um, and pre-season was, was, we went to Slovenia for pre-season and it was hilarious because he had us doing like set pieces first day. The lads were expecting to run hard and it was set pieces and, and team shape. And, nice. was, and he got us, wanted to play out from the back, but obviously big Nigel's players were a little bit different than what Paolo wanted. Yeah. So we're trying to do like little tippy-tappy football and I'm getting out of my feet and just... Whipping the channel, he's going, no, 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 stop, stop. He says, you've got to feed the guy in midfield. And I'm like, all right, no problem. But then I'm firing it into somebody in midfield. And it was like, he, this, whoever it was, couldn't get on it. Didn't, it. didn't want it. Do you know what I mean? In yeah. midfield, he's already looking for the second balls. So the whole sort of, he, he probably tried to reinvent the wheel before it was the ticker tacker yeah. tappy football. Um, and he didn't last, he didn't last very long, poor Paolo. So um, you got him sacked. You know what? I just Set broke into channel the, the worst thing was, I just broke into the, because obviously it was between me and Bruno. And I think Bruno played the first maybe four or five games. I played two, bombed me out. Then on the bench, Bruno played maybe one, somebody else maybe I played. And then it was Norwich away. And Carroll loved the ground. Yeah. And I played that game and played quite well. And then he got the, I got in the bullet after that game. I think I beat 3-2 and conceded 3. Got the bullet. Yeah. Got the bullet. 
<laughs> so then, was it big Sven who came in? Sven came in then. Yeah. Sven Goran. Sven Goran, how was yeah. that being your manager? So, obviously, he'd had unbelievable success at Lazio and then England. Obviously, done well with England. Um, and and he, Eureka. And Eureka. That was his biggest accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, Sven, Sven, was, Sven was unbelievable. Like, I wouldn't, I don't know. Did he talk much to you? Not really. You know, he, he was he was always polite, always, you know, same good morning, brief conversations, same with his sort of management side of things. He'd let his coach his coach. I find time, that so weird. Most of the time he'd collect yeah, balls. He, he, he would honestly just walk around and collecting the balls in um, and let his coach his coach. You know, I think he had Dieter Mahaman at one point. Derek Fizakali was another one. Chrissy Powell came in as well. Um, and he'd let them coach and he'd sort of be like, do a bit of tactics, don't get me wrong. He'd, he'd, he'd have his piece of paper and he'd say like, this is what we're going to do today. But then they'd all do all the coaching and he'd just sort of like flitter about. And you think to yourself like, you know, texting birds. <laughs> you coach at the highest level. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've been a lot of top managers are like that though. Like they'll they'll separate themselves and just be a manager. Yeah. And let the coaches do the coaching, won't they? I think that's a that, well. I don't know if, how much it is now, but I think that was a big thing then. You know, you employ coaches to coach. I'm managing players. I'm, I'm trying to manage. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to set out what I want you to do. And I think he was very very good at that. Like I say before games, he'd do the exact same thing. And you know, obviously when Sven came in, the, the, the tie owners would come in. So they'd come in with the with the money. That was the remit of bringing Sven in. The, yeah. That you're going to have a sort of blank check to go out in the championship and get whatever players that you wanted to get. So I think Nigel that got kills a few. you as well, though, doesn't it? It, it, it? it killed me, but I didn't. I, people always say, like, I only played like, say, I played eight games for Leicester in the league or whatever, something like that, because I went on loan to Peter for a few times. Do you, do, do you wish like something happened differently? And I'd say, no. Because the actual experience itself of being in that environment, and even it's not like it is now, but in the same sense, it was still we, unbelievable to be around. I was, well, you had some class players, didn't you? Like, like Yakubu, weren't it? And people like yeah, that. Yeah, if you look at like the actual Leicester City Premier League winning team, yeah, most of them were there then. So you got right. like, you know, Casper, you know, who had played with uh, Barry when he was a young kid. Yeah. Um, you know, you had Wes Morgan, you had um, Andy King, you had Danny Drinkwater. You had Vards, you had, you know, the, all these types of people that, that obviously went on to do incredible yeah. things. You know, Jeff Schluck was there. You know, and we've talked about Vards before, because obviously I'd been with him a few years before that at Fleetwood. When you came into into Leicester, could you see could you see him going on and doing what he did? Well, he signed a little bit. I think Nige, re- Nige signed him a little bit after Sven. Um, but I couldn't have... We couldn't have seen it there and then because when he first came, he, he was raw off it? the ra- no, he was off the rails. So he was getting like Be- behavior wise. Behavior wise, he wasn't probably in the same place as he was as as it evolved. Yeah. Over. So when I first well, when he first got there, I was Nigel come back. So Nigel came back the year I left the year after, and he signed Bards in the January. Now that was when Bards had his mohawk, and I think he died in pink at one point or something <laughs> like that. And he obviously. He's a little Sheffield boy, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Going out all the time. Obviously, he'd, he'd done really well, but in the same sense at Fleetwood, but in, he was new money. Yeah. Like, you know, and he, he probably got a decent little uplift on, on, on his Leicester package. And he was getting a black cab some days from Sheffield in the morning to Leicester training ground. Turned up with a broken hand because he punched a flipping, I don't know, a wall or something like that yeah. in a fit of rage. Or he'd been scrapping or he'd done something and he was half cut and he was just nowhere near the first team. And the lads were like, like I say, He'd run around forever, but he was just shanking balls, getting in front of goal, not even looking remotely composed. And lads were going like, nah, not for, he ain't going to play. Because we had like, at that time, we had like Jermaine Beckford up front, Nuge. Um, there was about three or four top strikers that we had. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, who, who was your car click? Who was your... Oh, we had an unbelievable car school. Um, driving from, I lived down there for six months, but when I wasn't getting the team, I just thought sacked that because there was lads driving in. So it was, me, Richie Wellens, Paul Gallagher, Danny Drinkwater, Ben Marshall, Lee Peltier would jump in now and again from Liverpool, depending on what he was doing. Um, That's just, well, you've named seven people there. What kind of car we <laughs> This is see, this is so this, is, be, be this two, is the story that I'm leading on to. Well, there'll be two cars, and then and then Richie being Richie, you know, typical little Salford lad, thought to himself, I think I can make a bit of money out of these lads here. <laughs> so he's gone and bought a Mercedes Vito, like top of the range one. You know, like the, all the concierge guys use now. Yeah. So he's gone and bought that. And it, Say he spent 20 grand cash on it, right? So he said, like, lads, I bought this veto. He said, we can all fit in it. He said, I'm going to charge you like a retainer, if you like, or, or, or rent on it. So lads, we, all the, they get in there and they just be snoozing. Everybody be snoozing. And I said, I was on the least amount of money by country miles. Snoozing, you mean falling asleep? Falling asleep, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So not pointing the snooze in. No, 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 no. <laughs> not pointing the snooze in. But yeah, so they, they'd be falling asleep. It, it was a, it was a tough journey sometimes. You know what I mean? Because you're going through that Manchester traffic, and so lads would be falling asleep. Yeah, we meet some would meet the Worsley, some would meet the windmill, and. Richie said to me, I said, Richie, how much money? So I don't mind driving. Can I get a discounted rate? And he was like, all right. He may say he charged the other lads 200 quid, right, a week, which is not exactly cheap. If you think it, that it, his lease on it might have been 300, 400 quid, he's probably getting a grand out of it, Bobby Davril. <laughs> so I'm going, Bobby Davril, mate, give it to me for free. Me and you are really close. And he's going like, all right, I'll do you for 100 quid. So I, I, but you had to drive. Alternate, so he'd drive there most of the time when I'd drive back. Right. Never used to drink coffee. I, at that age, I didn't like coffee. Until I started driving that veto, because the way I'm from training, I'd be literally like this, <laughs> just forcing coffees down my neck. Imagine so, how much money in assets you had in the back as well. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> if you'd have crashed, just like a nodding dog trying to miss the traffic on the way back. But yeah, so Richie did that for I think he did it for about six months. Um, you know, he, um, he he rented that out to lads, and then obviously some lads probably moved on to other clubs. Some lads stayed, and then he, he I think he I think he gave it to his brother or something like that to start doing taxing. Um, but yeah, he made some money. He's a typical little wheelie dealer, Bobby Dever. Yeah, really? I, I played, we played with at Salford, didn't we? Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. I weren't there. You know, there. No, I'd gone. Yeah, yeah and, and like like I say, Leicester was unbelievable experience. Like the, the players that were around it at the time, you know, you got, like, like I said, you mentioned Yukubu. He was probably coming towards the back end of his career there, but like his finishing was unbelievable. Was it? But what just did not miss? Yeah, in, in, a, in a probably a 4v4, 6v6, you know, the small sided games. Yeah. He was brilliant because just holding all six of them. I off. swear to God, he was an immovable object. Like you couldn't move him, so you just literally rolled to his. You had to roll it. You had the, you had a window about this big because he wouldn't move. <laughs> what funny. left or right? Left or right? I swear to God, you you like a yard of his, to his right, and he'd just go no, no, and I'd be like, yeah, you can just move. no, no. He, he, he had to hit his feet. Made you, know you look shit then. Yeah, but then you look at the GPS, right? So all, GPS would just come in then, so you just, how far you're coming in training, like people on like, I don't know, 11,000 metres, 10,000 metres, 8,000 metres. Yakubu was about 3,000 metres. <laughs> he just it? didn't move. Even when we were playing 11 v 11, just didn't move. Couldn't move, do you know what no. I mean? But, but what a player. But weren't asked either. No, so, like back in his career, he was, he was just, he was just a, like I say, you know, a movable object. He, he would put it to his feet and you, you couldn't get around him. He was he was absolutely unbelievable. Um yeah, and then obviously Sven got the the, the bullet because he'd signed like players on big big money. So we had like Conch come in on massive. He come to Liverpool, um, so I my, my days were numbered then. Yeah, uh, Big Nige came back in in the January, but I'd been on loan twice at Peterborough with Darren Ferguson, and we got promoted from League One to the Championship the season I was there at Peterborough. So you went on loan for a full season to Peterborough and yeah. got promoted. Promoted to the champ. I got injured four games before they won the final at Old Trafford. Right, the Huddersfield. And I got injured four games before, did my knee. And um, obviously I couldn't play. So yeah. that was, I, I couldn't, it, it, there was no way I could get back for it. Um, so I ended up watching that. One of your biggest kind of like disappointments not playing. To a degree, yeah. But I think I, I did really well when, when I was there. So that's when they, I had to get over this knee injury. Um, one of the worst parts, not just missing uh, Old Trafford, but I missed the pre-season trip with Sven. So Sven took the lads to Sweden for pre-season. And the lads were saying like, when they were texting me, like, it's absolute carnage because he, he's like God in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you told me this. Like, like literally, what, like, the, the, the lads would train and then they'd go for like a coffee or lunch and stuff like that. And they'd be walking down, whether they were in Stockholm or wherever, I don't know, where, wherever they went to. And he'd be walking down the high street and there would be like 10 out of 10 birds running up to him, like, grabbing him. And he, he, he obviously loved the females. And yeah. the lads were like, there's only one reason why he's brought us to Sweden. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he wants to be around the birds and they all love him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Fair uh, play. It was the same in Thailand. We went to Thailand for mid-season trip. They loved him, didn't they? Honestly. They loved him. We'd have tea every single night. So we'd all sit together, have tea. And he had, we stayed in Pattaya first and then Bangkok. And it, I've signed an NDA, so we can't go into details of the trip. <laughs> signed an NDA. <laughs> Non-disclosure. Non-disclosure. We can't really talk about what went on on the trip, but in the same sense, we'd be all finishing our tea and we had a curfew, which was ridiculous when you think about it, which was 12 o'clock Thailand time, but it was UK based. So it was, sorry, it was 12 o'clock UK time, which was four o'clock in the morning Thailand time. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so, 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 you wanted to keep us on so UK ben time. said to you, yeah, You've got to be in by midnight. UK. UK time. Yes. So you guys all went, what does that mean? I Check. It's like 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, so we can do what we want until 4 a.m. They were like, yeah. Every night. Every night. So we're going to Pattaya and Bangkok and it was 
wow. name. But every night when we finished tea, it'd be weird. There'd be, there'd be like, it was like Floyd Mayweather entered the building. There'd be a conveyor belt of, of <laughs> young, which I hope were ladies, <laughs> going, going to the lift and heading up to the penthouse. <laughs> the bit, you see him press the P. <laughs> And it was like... There's going, only one person in the going, and every, and we look at each other going like, they're going to the gaffer's room, aren't they? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, proper... Love these ladies, didn't you? Good Sven. So, what a guy. Yeah. What a guy. But you had, like, you had some... Because obviously you weren't in the, in the side, so you had some decent loans as well. Did, did you did you move permanent to Barnsley or was that a, was that a loan? No, it was permanent. So, I, I, Big Nigel got the job back at... Um, so I've been on loan at Peterborough in the championship we've done yeah. really well we're about mid-table and for Peterborough that's a big thing Like I played with some great players there you know characters again you know you, the, the likes of Joe Lewis was in there uh, Ryan Bennett who's had a good career and Mark Little at right back Tommy Rowe Is Tomlin there Lee Tomlin, Lee Tomlin. George Boyd Craig McHale Smith um, you know, he David was on Bob. fire for, the, for them yeah. few seasons weren't he Brilliant. McHale Smith um, so we had a really good team there and we'd, we'd, we'd end up in Mendes line we'd have, end up in the, in the championship mid-table and I wanted to stay but Nigel called me back so Nigel come back from, I think he maybe got sacked from Hall or something like that. And he'd come back and he called me. Um, and we were playing away at Crystal Palace. and Crystal Palace in championship? Championship they were at that time. Right. And he called me back straight into the uh, first team squad. And he's pulled me before the game and he said, it's most left field thing. I think the few games before, I think him and Concha had a bit of a set to after one of the games in the sense of an argument. Um, and he said, I'm going to play you to, to prove a point to Conch. And I was like, fucking hell. Like using me as a bit of a pawn here, like. I'll take it. Well, <laughs> I thought that at first, and then I looked who we were playing, and who was I playing against? Wilfred Zaha. Oh, no. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I thought, this could be a disaster. Yeah. Um, but I, we won 1 0, and I played out my skin. I set up the goal. Jeff, Jeff Slup scored it. Um, Go on, TK. I played out my skin. Dominated Zaha. You know and I thought to myself after that, I thought, I might get a little in the team. And he, he just pulled me in. He said, Look, Conchie's back in, mate. Even though I played out my skin. Really? I said, Look, he's, he's on big money. The, the, I have to, I have to justify, have to, I have yeah, to justify yeah. the fact that he's this and that. And you know what? I, I respected his honesty, and I think if, if when managers are honest with you like that, it doesn't always seem fair. But he was honest with me. He said, "Look, you're not going to play." Um, came from the end of the season. He said, "Him, Craig Shakespeare, end of season awards." Again, they're socialising with the lads, having a few beers and whatnot. And he said to me, "He said, what do you do? You get any awards? Was it like best, least, least played? Yeah, <laughs> best, <laughs> you know, <laughs> best lads ever about the dressing room. Yeah, yeah club man of the year. Club, club man of the year. That's the one. That's the one. Club man. Um, so he said, like, look, T, you got a year left, but you're not going to play. But not just saying it. He said you're a good lad. It would. I don't mind having you around the place if you want to stay. Uh, you can potentially go on loan, or the, he, he, and he said this. He said between me and you, the club have got a bit of money. New owners, go and get yourself a little pay up. And I thought. All right, then I'll speak to my agent, see what he said. And I spoke to my agent and the the, 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 end, the agreement was pretty good in my favour, to be honest, to, to pay me up to a pay large up proportion to move on. Um, and obviously at that time, I'd, I'd been to Vegas, you know, from the age of 21 and I was now 27 or 28. So I've been six years in a row, so I needed to maintain that, you know. Lifestyle. I wanted to get to the, my testimonial, 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So uh, going back to, you know, opportunities, Hilly was at Barnsley at the time in the champ. He'd, he'd had the job six months, I think, something like that. Sloggies. Sloggies are back. Yeah. He, he got a bit more professional now because he was with a big fish. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So he, I ended up going... So he was in his, he was in his Calvin Klein. He was in his <laughs> no, he was sloggies. Yeah. And he'd, uh, yeah, he took me to uh, Barnsley. Um, so was, at the time, like I know we've spoke about it, John Stones was coming through then, was he, at, at Barnsley as a young lad? Yeah, Stones would have been. not there as well? No, Trips had just left. So he'd gone back to, I think, maybe Burnley. Or he'd signed at Burnley. And... and if you listen to the high performance podcast, I got there, um, say maybe a couple who? of months. Who's that? Sorry, sorry, another podcast. Uh, <laughs> Fucking who that? what Kieran says on it in the sense of he had that reality check. At, you know, we talk about doors, we talk about attitudes, we talk about them, them light bulb moments like Vard's had. And I remember Kieran says that he had that light bulb moment at Barnsley. He said that his mum pulled him. He was, maybe he was sat in an apartment and he'd been. You know, the stories of him at Barnsley were that he obviously liked to socialise, liked to bevy, probably wasn't living as well as you should, carrying a bit of timber, still had the ability, but turn up on a Saturday, still half court, or not playing yeah. how he should be playing and stuff yeah. like that. And he had that reality. And, and a couple of lads had obviously been with him at that time and were like, he's a bit, of a bit of a cannon, that lad. And obviously we had a lot of cannons and I was like, how, how big how big a cannon is he? And they were like, no, he's, he's, he's on a good scale, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you've you been was. around the game long enough, you know there's levels to different types of cannons. And they said he's, he's, he's got a bit of a cannon about him, sort of yeah. thing. So, yeah, obviously he'd moved on from that. Who sat him down then? He was his mum. Yeah, he, he talks about it in the sense of she was just like, "What?" 
what do you want out of this? Where are you trying to get to and what are you trying to do sort of thing? And it's probably that light bulb moment where you thought, like, I'm either going to fall by the wayside here or become either... Because he'd always... Ability he'd always have a career. He'd always have a career. Ability. But it would be a case of where he'd have dropped down slowly but surely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or do I want to kick on and, and, and change? And I think he went back to Burnley and I think he mentions Eddie Howe for sort of reinvigorating that professionalism and that, that, that sort of like let's get some structure to what we do, let's start eating right, let's start living right, and let's try and be the best possible version of, of, of him that he can be. Yeah. Obviously, from then on in, it's entailed to being that. And it's going back to the case of so many of them players probably don't get that light bulb moment until it's too late. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Stonesy, Stonesy uh, I can't speak highly enough of him as a irrelevant of football ability, but as a person. You know them lads that come through that have constantly got a smile on the face, but also have that fearlessness to go and play how they want to play. And at the time we played, we were playing a three at the back. He was playing right wing back, and he was an athlete, up and down the wing, like you know, pace. Um, he was slight, like stick thin. Yeah, obviously had to put a bit of weight on, but he just. How old was he? Then? 18? 17, 18, 17, probably. 18, yeah. Playing championship. championship week in week out. Could you tell he had it though? Just attitude, fearlessness, um, ownership of what he did, but also the fact of how nice a person he was, off the pitch, smiling all the time. Like I said, but also had that. You'd have a go at him, but he'd give you that look. He wouldn't say anything, but he'd give you that look as if to say, like, well, what you're saying to me, it's not going to do anything but make me play better, which is a good, like, which I always thought I had as a, as a lad, not on his scale, but in the same sense, the more you shouted at me to a degree, the better I'd go because I'd think to myself, what you? I'll go and show you. A bit like when they, you know, that, that challenge that, that maybe the youth team managed, had, my dad always had that with me. He'd always challenge me to, like, come on. Yeah. And I think... Stones, some people can melt, can't they? Some people that, can get... Like, in, well, in the modern day, at them they do. Melt. In the modern day, nobody yeah. shouts because you know they, they, they do melt. Whereas Stones, he had that sort of resilience where, and I think we've seen it throughout his career where he's he's, he's took some knocks, but he's got that resilience to say, "I can I can take them." You know, yeah. I can take the punches, and, and he did that, and he'd come on nights out, and you know, he'd, he'd be he a did like an night out, didn't he? Oh, he, sure, he, I heard that. no, he he'd come on us like we think we went Leeds one time, and you know, if we were in I think we were in China White or something like that, and he everybody, he was like we're all absolutely steaming, rolling around and stuff like that, but. He had that. He, he was part of us. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Even yeah. at that age, yeah. he wasn't going to separate himself. And, but he would do extras. You know, he was he was in the gym. But he, he, for me, players like that just have a fearlessness of there's no failure in them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he he was come content and knowing of his ability and where he was going to get to. Uh, yeah. It was just a case of opening the right doors, probably. But the, one of the best ones at Barnsley was Hilly signed Mido. He was like the marquee signing. So remember Mido, like when you look at his actual fact sheet yeah. career. And he's he's a descendant Egyptian of king. Egyptian like king royalty royalty really? yeah. yeah yeah so Mido has played at Roma I think he's he's been at Lazio he's been at Marseille he's been a you know unbelievable and unbelievable Barnsley. Club. he's come to Barnsley right and he's he's got this remit of he's got to get himself fit he's on decent money for that level um, and he used to drive from Newcastle every day in a CLS sixty three which is about a six point something litre car. <laughs> And it's a big old journey, so he's 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 rinsing the fuel. Yeah. And he'd turn up and he'd, he honestly, what a guy, nice as pie. But he was carrying like he's heavy, carrying a lot of heavy. Yeah, heavy I remember timber. a picture of him. So <laughs> they'd have this remit of getting him fit and he'd put a bin bag on, put like about five layers of clothes on, he'd just go and jog around the pitch for an hour, two hours, and he'd finish, take it off. He did this all of, pretty much all of preseason, all of the first probably four weeks of the season, and he didn't lose a pound. <laughs> <laughs> did he, that? Didn't What's lose a pound. He that's, that's what they said. And this, one of the lads said, like, what past his car one time, and there was just fucking rappers everywhere. <laughs> but he would li- he, he would come in and he'd go like he'll, he'll be like, and Flick would be like, Mido, you know, wait, wait, you you've got to stay wait. And he'd go, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but it was obviously just Tanking the Not a pound on Mackie, the Mackie D's on the way home or something like that. Yeah, he's obviously driving from Newcastle all the way to Barnsley and just... Eating. Eating. But he didn't give a fuck. Genuinely. Did he not? He'd look, he'd, 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 his fact sheet spoke for itself. He's, you know, yeah. go on Wikipedia and you're like, do what you want, kid. But he played one game. I think they brought him on one game and the fans were going like, wow, Mido. And they saw him run and it was like... Wow, the, the Mido. Big, the, the, big, the big lad's <laughs> finished here. Wow, Mido. Yeah. He ran for about 30 seconds and he was... <gasps> and that was him done. Yeah. But he... he as far as probably high profile players, he was one of the most high profile you can possibly get. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And then obviously I think he went after that to like like you say, royalty but manage some of the biggest clubs in Egypt and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um but yeah, six, eight weeks and he didn't lose a pound. And they couldn't work out why the, the, the medical staff were like this is this is this <laughs> he is was a, obviously lying yeah, as well. This is, what no, he was they were like eating. no, he was telling them what he was eating and it was like, This is a physical miracle. Salad. Yeah, I just eat salad and I eat you know. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. So no, he was a good one. Yeah, and then obviously he um, 
time at Barnsley came to abrupt end. We got relegated to the season after there was a great escape and um, went to League One and they sort of said they would need to get rid of a few. I was on that list. High earners. I wouldn't say high oh. earners. I wouldn't say high earners, but yeah, probably earning a little bit. Oh, crap. Crap being the goal. <laughs> and he's is a high earner and he's crap. They say, he's get, going. Get him You've out. ticked both boxes, Tom. <laughs> Thanks very much. Get him out, you're finished. <laughs> you're shit. Um, and then my mate, Illy, signed yeah. me for the th- third time, um, said, look, come back at Rochdale. So went back uh, with our chief at Rochdale. But the world had changed then, you know, because I'd been at the championship for a few years and yeah. I'd been around that. I'd gone back to sort of Rochdale and it's a different environment, you know, the, the sort of, the remit had changed. Hilly wasn't so much focused on, you know, nights out and team spirit. It was more sort of the professionalism, which was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I sort of probably went in there with a different mindset regarding how I thought it was going to be. And he was challenging me, probably in the way that he used to challenge me. But me probably losing a bit of my, you know, ego, do you want to say quiet if you like, of like yeah. having that sort of, you know, put yourself on a pedestal, having that self-worth. I probably lost a little bit of that, you know, um, at that stage. And him probably challenging me the way that he did probably didn't work out as well. as Just it. didn't enjoy it. I, 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 the first season I did, I did quite well. And then the second season, it just all went tits up. I just, I, you know, I, I, when you look back now, you find it sad. But, and I see it a lot with lads now, you sort of lose a bit of that fearlessness, that sort of like going into every game where you've got the chip on your shoulder, you know you're going to give it everything, but also the the guy you're playing opposite was not getting the, he's best not getting the better of you. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I found myself getting to a point where I was probably a little bit resigned to the fact of, I'm not really asked, And that's such a sad yeah. existence for a footballer. But it was where I was at that time of my probably career and life that I was 31 and Hill used to always say, quote, some people are old before the time. And some people are young beyond the years or something yeah. like that. And I was all before my time in, in that aspect because I was only 31 coming up to 32. Yeah. I had plenty of years left in me. Was you ready to finish that? I was sort of falling out of love with it a bit, yeah. yeah. And I became a bit of a, a bit like you, a fucking moaner. Do you know what I mean? Is it, but you do. You, you, yeah. you, if lads aren't doing it right, instead of focusing on you, the most important thing you can do is make sure you're the best version of you instead of moaning at other people trying to get the best version out of them. Yeah. Focus on you first. Is that what you, you became? I think became? I did. I think I did. And, and like, look, I, I don't think you know, and I think me and Hilly have conversations now where we're both to probably blame because he probably didn't handle me like he should have done. He probably yeah. treated me a certain way when I was... Do you think was, he treated you like the first time he had you? Yeah, but... you changed? Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit, but also he treated me like I was 21. Yeah, that's what I mean. I so he still thinks you're 21. Yeah, and, and, he, and he tried to set sort of boundaries and rules on me that you, you can't sit on a 31-year-old man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm a grown man and you're trying to tell me what I can and can't do away from football. And it's not like I was a professional at this point, like in this, you know, doing things right. I looked after my body, looked after, you know, myself outside of football. I'd go to Vegas every year and maybe a few lads' holidays, but I wasn't out drinking Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday. I was doing things right. But he tried to put sort of restrictions on a team and as a club because he could, because we had a very young squad. But I was a 31 man probably going a little bit against the grain, saying, like, I don't see how you can do that to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I, I'm a man. In what other environment can th- this happen? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't go into an office and he goes like, well, you're not drinking this weekend. And I'm like, well, why? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I I'll that. do what I want. Do you know what I mean? Sort of thing. So it it just it just didn't sort of probably pan out the way I wanted it to end. But, you know, I, I always say this, that, that it was going to come at some point. Um, probably came a little bit earlier. But, yeah. but I'm okay with it. It probably wasn't that okay at the time. Um, dropping out of... But now Rockford. you can accept it because you, you, like you drop down to Filed. non-league. Yeah. So how have you found it then dropping into non-league? At first, yeah. Wow, what a reality culture shock! I remember speaking to you and you was like, "Well, you were at Salford. You took the piss is... out of me about seven times because you scored about forty goals against me." <laughs> you just said, <laughs> "Surely his lowest moment in your career was when he scored a hat trick against yeah. you, <laughs> and he, sh- he dicked the keeper. I think, yeah, the keeper. Did you dicked the keeper? Oh, he, he was. He was like, he thought he was." Being Harry Kane at that point, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he was on the absolute crest of a wave. If we can get the video, don't get it's the video. The world's worst hat trick. Like I just shin two in and then dink a penalty. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, celebrated like he just scored a FA Cup final. Little shit. I think it's five 0 that game as well, didn't you? Yeah. We, we were top of the league. Yeah, we were top of the league. You had already won the league, I yeah. think. Mm. So how did you get into? So obviously now you're. A, well, what was what just like financial advisor? Yeah, I'm an IFA, so independent financial advisor, basically, that's the, the, the remit. But obviously, it's, there's a, in this day and age, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and I kind of like took the, I went to Bangor after that in the Welsh Prem, which was another 
reality shock I ended up oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh don't, don't, don't. Go on. just let me do it just let me do it go on, right, go on. Me do it. Go on. thanks I once took a girl to Wales to banger. <laughs> no, it's not that. You told it all he's, he's told wrong. I haven't. <laughs> you have. Anyway, I once anyway, took a girl to, to Wales. Wales to banger. I, yeah. <laughs> Do I not say like where and you say something like to banger? No. That is the joke. Anyway. It's, it's shocking. It's shocking. Cut that go out. on. Cut that out. It's crap. <laughs> I can't do a dad joke every week. Um, so they were like doing some sort of weird hybrid system where you trained at Caffey Druid, which was not too far. Um, one night a week and then you train at Banger one day a week the rest of the old time is your own <laughs> you're laughing at <laughs> Banger um, the weird thing was is that it was through LinkedIn that do you remember the Vaughns yeah yeah so they they took over Banger yeah yeah um, under scrupulous circumstances yeah um, so anyway so I got a decent enough contract where I could subsidise my life a little bit but the, the years that filed and the years of Banger had been sort of like a case of where I wasn't probably earning as much as I was spending because yeah. your lifestyle sort of what you're doing dictates what you spend. Yeah. So the tap was on a little bit, but luckily I'd, I'd done, I'd done, I had a financial advisor when I went to Leicester and I'd done some pretty good things without subconsciously knowing I'd done good things because, yeah. you know, I suppose going fast forward a little bit, I just trusted my advisor. I, you know, um, Gareth Christie, who's my, my gaffer now, he'd just done the right by me. He'd done the right things of what you should be doing, lay the structures, done the, you know, lay the foundations, built on top of it when I don't more money, put money away yeah. for a rainy day, put money into my pension, which is different because I can access mine at 35. He'd done these things, got myself a nice house. He'd done these things and, 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 and done good for me, if you know what I mean. Um, so whilst I was, I started a young family, whilst I'd done that at Filed and Banger, I was topping up with savings, um, which is, you know, had helped. But in the same sense, I knew I needed to do something else. And that's when I got given the opportunity by Pro Sport Wealth, who I work for now, um, to do my exams. And they sort of did it on a women of prayer. They weren't paying me any money. They just said, if you want to do your exams, go and do it. And I was like, what? what? I don't know anything about, anything about this, this yeah. stuff. So it was, it was purely fish in the dark, but I needed to do something. And I kind of sort of tried to picture myself in 10, 15, 20 years time, um, what I would what I'd want to be doing who, want to be, who, yeah. and who I'd be, want to be working with. Yeah. And this sort of fit the remit. Like I said, I, I flirted with the coaching and the agency side of things for a short period. I couldn't do the coaching, managing maybe, but coaching just didn't appeal to me. No. Uh, the agency side of things, you know, I, I, every Tom Dick and I was an agent at the time and, you know, there was obviously the new regulations coming, which is probably it's better. Dick here. you got people like this guy here who, you know, no, he's good. Um, he's a nice guy in the, in, in the sense of he's done very, very well. Um, but it, it's been a long road, you know. You know, nothing worthwhile is ever easy. Um, yeah. And I just fancied the idea of of helping lads on that sort of financial journey uh, because I'd, I'd witnessed a lot of bad things. You know, I've been to Vegas ten times. I'd always done the right thing of putting money away when I was treating myself. But I witnessed a lot of lads that had not done the right things um, throughout their careers. And so they, many stories. They, they done ten times that, but I'd witnessed out. it firsthand, which is different. I'd witnessed it firsthand from the from the from the, the bottom to the top in the sense of the lads that were probably earning no more than two grand a week coming out of the game but to lads that were earning 20 grand a week that were coming out of the game and, and the, the difference between the two wasn't a lot when it should be yeah the, the, you know they don't miss the whole career so they should be pretty much they're not they're gonna have to work again but it's gonna should be, be set, a lot shouldn't they? should be set to a degree it's gonna be a lot easier the transition of coming out of the game yeah. and doing something you know whereas i'd witnessed that firsthand um so i i saw myself sort of trying to you know educate the, the next crop of um players and, and and lads that i played with who were younger than me to sort of lay the financial foundations for them and then build on top of it and, and get them to a position, hopefully when they're 35 and I'm a bit older, that, you know, we're, we're doing that old pina colada on the beach jobby and, you know, they've completed life because they're off to work again or they're in a final position where they're like, Jesus, TK, thank you, mate. Thanks for yeah. looking after us and, and doing that. So passed my exams in nine months, which probably the, of all my footballing careers, apart from having my kids, I said it's probably the biggest achievement of, of, of my life because it's the equivalent of degree to do that in nine months also playing football but having a family as well um, there was a lot of pressure entailed in that because my savings were slowly dripping down which is a worrying time for any player yeah. um, you know and it's financial pressures are a big big thing for players who are coming out of the game you lose a bit of yourself the adulation of, of being on that pedestal and having that um, ad, you know that, that sort of like team spirit that sort of like daily routine and structure but also that sort of like going into the supermarket and somebody recognising you, going, you know, somebody saying something nice about you. Yeah, yeah. That You lose all that and then you get the questions that get reversed and it's like, well, what are you going to do now? Yeah. How are you going to cope? How are you going to financially survive? So you're happy where you are now then? Because obviously you've stayed, you've stayed in the game, 
and obviously you're around players and and like like you've said helping them build a foundation that when they come out of the game they they're hopefully set for life or 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 they're set up in a very good way. So yeah, I think I went through a bit of a journey from 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 leaving Bangor um, to go to I went to Ramsbottom. We've all played at Ramy, mm-hmm. um, you know our local club, and I had three nearly four years there. I think it was because of COVID where it reinvigorated me and, and sort of reignited my love for football because it was reminding me of when we first started off at Berry. You know, honest, hard-working lads. You know, no egos, no ulterior motives, you know, no financial pressures really in in, in terms of who's earning this. You just enjoyed this. football. The, the, you just went out there and you just worked hard for 90 minutes. Yeah. Standard was sometimes poor shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you just shake your head going, wow, this is yeah. brutal. Sometimes though. Yeah, <laughs> most of the time. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it's brutal. But it's lads kicking 10 lumps out of each other. You know, football, in my opinion, how it used to be played, yeah. most aspects, you know, you obviously get people trying to reinvent the wheel thinking they can tippy-tappy football around, you know, Northern Premier League football. You can't do that. You can't, <laughs> you can't do that and dog crap No, pitches. on pitches like that. So, but it reinvigorated my, my sort of love for the game and why I, why I first played it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it kind of transpired on that journey of, you know, me maybe get a bit of myself back in that aspect and not sort of leaving football on a bit of a downer. Yeah. Got it back. And then when I finally jacked it in from, from Rami nearly two seasons ago, I think it was something like that, you know, I was coming up to 37. Um, I, I was in a, a good place, you know, with work and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I feel like that helped me massively, you know, going forward uh, because I didn't leave football on a sour note. I left it on a good note. And, yeah. I, and people always turn their nose up at them lower league clubs, uh, you know, like of Rami and stuff like that, you know, because I signed up thinking, I'll be gone here in a month. This is like terrible. And I, I you stayed there three years. Loved it. Loved it. Like yeah. genuinely, you know, I, I, honestly, four or five pints, you know, after a game, I'm going to, you know, speak to the fans, speak to people around the place. Yeah. Realize, to feel as re- well, realize how, how, how much it means to people. Yeah. Um, you know, and like I say, honest, hardworking lads taking the piss out of each other, you know, like you boys do, you know, we do on a daily sort of thing. Yeah. But, you know, there was no sort of agendas. There was no sort of like, you know, people don't get upset or anything like that because they all are in that yeah. in that same boat. You know, and it, and, I, and I really enjoyed it. And then obviously, that sort of transpired into me having to call it a day, um, and because work was getting busy and, and whatnot, and having a family. So and we and we play golf four times a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I was gonna say yeah. we're trying to become professional golfers, but it's not working out very well. Um, you, had to, you had to pack that in. But yeah, like you, you've got to. You do most of your business now on the golf course. Try to, try to. Where, where else can you have four and a half hours when it's not? So if, if I'm meet, whether it's meeting a young lad or it's meeting a seasoned pro, and they like a game of golf, where else can you sort of open them, peel back them, them layers of you know the onion rather than being on a golf course if they enjoy golf? It's harder when you sat across from somebody in a, you know in a, yeah. an office or, or or in a coffee shop or a yeah. hotel or whatever. You sort of get that sort of initial meeting. Well, where they relax a little bit on the golf course, don't they? they open up. Of course and you, you do. You can take the piss a little bit, and it's you, yeah. you know you have, a, you have a laugh and stuff like that. I think it's a, it's a big thing, and I think having you know on a separate note coming out of the game, having them crutches. We all need crutches. You know, when you've been around football your whole life, one of the hardest things is coming out of the game from you know there's different aspects: the financial side, the the mental health side of, of not having that adulation, but also you know not having that structure of every day is a, you've exactly. got a routine having them crutches of and golf's one for me and you competitive competitive but also it's you against you a bit like um, you, we had with football to a degree but also you know might be gym lads need these sort of structures in place and I think golf's a great one yeah. um, you know I, I know a lot of people into paddle now aren't they paddle's a new thing but people no, no, sorry <laughs> yeah, I've just seen it on social media I'm just trying to be I'm just trying to be paddle <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be paddle diplomatic out here I yeah, can't relate yeah. paddle to golf right sorry if you play sorry. paddle ball you're a full on gimp right. Right. Just, you just, just alienate half your podcast just, yeah. half your listeners now have just switched off right I've gone oh, well, I love paddle I just, I just I took up paddle <laughs> I don't want them listening if you play paddle ball right uh, yeah so but we have these crutches and I think golf's been a, a good one for me you know yeah. um, to, to, to lean on and I think you know You'd say the same thing, you know. Coming out of the game is not easy. You've got work, you've got family, but you need something that's, that's that's for you. And yes, we do play quite a lot of golf. But how good to my swing? It's so weird, it's man. Horrendous. <laughs> never, never known a man like set the feet off seventy yard right and, and hit it. Get these snake hips around, and somehow it's it straight. <laughs> and he holds it underneath yeah. like this. And then if you look at Gareth's weird. swing, Gareth's got like a textbook PGA, PGA swing, but hits the ball like he's a four year old Filipino. <laughs> I can hit my seven iron as far as it's his driver. <laughs> so bad, you know. <laughs> Who? Well, no, he was actually decent the other day. So. Was he? Yeah. I was the best first out, time for I was, everything. I was the best out of the fall. So, what have you 
have you got anything to say to like lads who, who want to give you a shout for your business or what? No, I, th- I think obviously, you know, lads know who we are, Pro Sport Wealth, um, and we're just trying to, you know, change the game in certain aspects of, of this mantra about lads being bankrupt or, you know, financially not in the right place. And for me, it's about doing the little things um, from the start, uh, building the foundations, laying the structures for not just football in aspects, but once you finish football. And that, that can be in every moment, like it happened to me. It can be in every moment at 25 or it can be at 35. Uh, when the tap, when you turn it off, it's hard um, because you start to see them savings or them investments or, or you know your property side of things start going down and it's, it's not easy. Um, and, if, and if you've got these things in place, you've got somebody to trust, which is the most important thing. You know, I know pe- you, people speak to their agents a lot and stuff like that, but I think what we do is it's completely different, um, but we can play a role within that side of things to help lads, you know, be in a better financial position whenever they finish football. Um, and it's like, like I say, it's getting more and more important because of this social media element where you've got to keep up with the Joneses. Everything's bloody Palm Angels or Louis Vuitton. GML, I like it. <laughs> I was going to say, no way you paid top dollar for that. You shut down all the bastards have done me. Tighten them some rematch. Not no cobbler. Do we reopen it before Christmas to say that now? <laughs> yeah, that'd be all don't you, don't been, you worry about that. Raiders. Yeah, so like I say, it uh, can be boring what we do, but it's important um, for these for the lads, wherever you're at the end of your career or the beginning of your career, um, to have somebody that you trust that's going to help you guide you through that journey. And that's what we do. And that's what, I'll, you know, hopefully I'm going to be doing for the next um, 20 years. Class. Well, so, on yeah. that, it's been, like we said, absolute pleasure to have you in. Listen to your story right from the beginning where I first met you to obviously a, a really, really brilliant career. So what you're doing now, pal, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Really enjoyed it, lads. Cheers, TK. Thank you very much, TK. Welcome, lads.